So we have an electron moving along an x-axis, and we have a formula for that electron's position on the x-axis. I'm going to write this out here in a slightly easier to read fashion. So it's 16 times t times e to the power of negative t. Now we want to know where the electron is on the x-axis, specifically how far it is from the origin when it briefly stops. And the first thing we want to do is we want to find out when exactly that electron is going to briefly stop. Because all we are given is the formula for the electron's position in terms of time. And if we want to find its position at some point in time, whenever it stops, we'll need to find out when that time actually is. Now, if we had a formula for the speed of the electron uh, in relation to time, then we could set that equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of this function because remember that the derivative of a function is the rate of change in that function. And in the case of position, the derivative of that is going to be the same as that object's speed. So let's take the derivative of this. I'll say that v, the speed, is equal to dx over dt, the derivative of x with respect to time. And uh, so I can take this 16 out as a constant. So I'm actually going to write this as 16 times dt, because once we take a constant out, it's much easier to integrate uh, the actual term here, since that will be changing. And now uh, we have the derivative of t times e to the power of a negative t. So we can solve this derivative using the power rule of differentiation. And so in the power rule, uh, we take uh, the first term, uh, find the derivative of that, and multiply it by the second term unchanged. So that's uh, 1, the derivative of t, with respect to t, times e to the power of negative t, and then plus the reverse of that, now the first term, unchanged, times the derivative of the second term. So that's plus t, the first term here, times the derivative of e to the power of negative t, which, uh, using the power chain rule, is just negative e to the power of negative t. And so we can simplify this a bit by taking out the e to the power of negative t, since that's in both terms here. And now we have a much cleaner formula for the speed of the electron at uh, various points of time, t here. Now once again, we're looking for the time when the electron momentarily stops. So that means that's going to be when its speed is equal to zero. So I'm going to set this entire formula here uh, equal to zero. Now this function may look somewhat complex, but actually finding out where it's going to be equal to zero it's actually pretty easy in this case, because as long as you understand that, since all of these terms are multiplied by each other, we just need to find out where one of the terms is equal to zero, and it will make the whole thing equal to zero. And right here, we have this term, the, uh, this 1 minus t in parentheses. And if that t was equal to 1, then 1 minus 1 is just 0. It multiplies by everything else and makes the whole thing 0. So we can say that this function is equal to 0 when t is equal to 1 second. So when t is equal to 1 second, our velocity, our speed of the electron, has briefly stopped. So now that we know this, now we can plug this time into our formula for the electron's position and to find out where exactly it is at that point in time. So here I have taken one second, and I put that in for the original formula the problem gave us for the position, and plugging this into our calculator, we can see that this is equal to 5.9 meters, meaning that the electron will be 5.9 meters away from the origin uh, at the point in time when it briefly stops.